So here's a really quick look at some of the experiments that we're looking at for ASP.NET Core 7 to do with making working with JOT authentication uh, in minimal APIs especially a little easier uh, to get going from a basic app to one that has a protected API. So I'm starting with an app up here that is pretty much what you get from file new web API uh, using minimal. I've replaced the weather API with just a very simple hello world. And if I go ahead and run that down here, I can browse to the uh, address that is emitted over here. So let me go and have a look and we'll get that. There's my hello world API there. I can go to the swagger that we know is there as well. And I can see that I've got one API. So often the very next thing that you'll want to do is add an API that's protected. So I'm going to put a new API in here now at forward slash protected. It's going to take in the user and print out uh, the user's name. And then you know, critically, I'm going to mark it as requiring authorization. Now, I haven't set up any authentication for this app um, or any authorization rules. And this is one of the things that we'd like to improve is right now, this is obviously the first logical step is I have an API and I want it to be protected and I've declared that as so, but I haven't declared anything else in my application that's uh, needed for this to actually work. So today that's quite a lot of stuff. You have to add a bunch of stuff to services. You have to add the specific authentication type you like. You want to configure that authentication type. If it's job bearer, you need to add a whole bunch of properties to do with signers and audiences and all those type of things. Uh, then you need to add the authorization uh, services. Then you also need to go and add authentication and authorization middleware. So one of the things we're thinking about is what if we could just make a lot of that stuff automatic, have better defaults uh, for development time, like we do for HTTPS. Uh, so you get security uh, in terms of a, a secure connection by default. We have a development certificate that's automatically installed uh, and on some platforms automatically trusted. Uh, that's how my HTTPS is working over here is using that development certificate. Can we extend that philosophy to things like JOT authentication? So this is an experimental API. Uh, the, the actual proposal would be that this would be a property rather than a method, but because I'm adding it from a library, it has to be a method here. So I say builder.authentication.addJotBearer and I've got no parameters. This is just gonna set it up with the default, uh, which we'll see in a minute uh, effectively sets up JotBearer in a special mode for development. Now, again, because I'm doing this from uh, an external library, I have to still go ahead and add these middleware. One of the other proposals is that we would remove the need to add these middleware. We would automatically add them for you if we detect that you've added any authentication scheme. Uh, very similar to how we automatically add the routing middleware with the, with the new web application host. We automatically add the developer exception page when you're in development. You can imagine that these might automatically be added for you as well. And then the only thing I had to do was this one line up here uh, in order to make uh, this line down here actually work. So now that I've made my change to my application, I'm gonna come back down here and build and run it again. And if I come back and refresh this now, we see we've got two APIs over here. My first one, if I try that out, we'll see that that works. I get my 200 code. But if I try and hit the second one now, obviously, this is gonna fail. I get a 401 because I haven't submitted any authentication material. I haven't given it uh, the token that it's asking for, a jot in this case. So how do we go about getting a token. Well, that's the other area of complexity today when doing API auth and ASP.NET Core is that you need to have an identity server. You need to have some authority that is issuing tokens that you can then configure your application to support. Uh, we don't have an inbox token server. Uh, the templates uh, do offer uh, identity server or Duende identity server or Azure AD, uh, but that obviously requires setting up either an external library uh, or, or server um, or even utilizing a cloud service. So what if just for the development purposes, I just wanna get this thing going and check that I've got my uh, authorization code correctly configured. Wouldn't it be nice if I could create jots that just work locally? So that's one of the other things that we're investigating down here. If I go to a different uh, terminal, I've got this dev jots tool which is part of this repo that I'll share with you at the end here. Uh, and this allows me to actually create jots for the project. I'm in the directory for this project up here and I can say uh, dev jots create and you see it created me a jot. So, okay, fantastic. I'm gonna grab this token down here and I now have a token that I can use to authenticate. Now I haven't configured Swagger over here with all the metadata it needs to render the correct UI for doing authentication and authorization from the UI. That is something else that we're looking at as well, but we haven't got to that yet. So I'm just gonna come down here and use Postman uh, instead. So what I'm gonna do is I'll uh, grab my URL and I'll put that in here. Let's see it fail first. I wanna go to protected. If I hit send, we can see I get the 401 unauthorized. So let me grab my token again. I'll come to the authorization section. I'll say I want to use bearer token. 
and I will paste that token in. And if I hit send this time, you see I get my status 200 okay. And it's saying hello, D-A-M-I-A, which is my username over on this machine. So it's working. I've now got all authentication working that simply. So let's say I wanna create a token representing a different user. I can come back over here and let's say I can create a token for a name test user. So now I've got a token for test user. Let me grab uh, that token. And this time I will authenticate uh, with that token instead. Let me just delete uh, this token that I'm using here, paste that one in, hit send. And now I'm saying hello to that test user. So it's a very simple way for me to have uh, tokens for this application. If I type list now, I can see all the tokens that I've created uh, for this project. Uh, I can also see the key that was used uh, uh, to create these tokens, which at the moment is automatically generated and stored in the user secret. So it automatically gets loaded into the uh, applications configuration when you're doing local development. Um, and you can you know, reset that key if you want to as well. This will obviously invalidate any tokens that are already running. So if I hit reset now, it says, hey, you sure you wanna do that? All your tokens are gonna be invalidated. So I go ahead and do that. Now I'd have to restart my app obviously to get the new key at the moment. So if I shut down the app, restart it again, come over here and try and send that again, you know I'm back to the 401. So we can see we can do basic kind of things like that. So that's an initial exploration. If you're interested in uh, following along with this exploration and giving feedback as we do so, you can go up to uh, GitHub, go to Damien Edwards uh, slash ASP.NET core dev jots up here and uh, clone the repo, try it out yourself. And uh, you can follow the readme, all the instructions about how to get going are in there. It also points to the issue where we're tracking this area over in the ASP.NET Core repo.